Unit push rate optimization is found under the company screen and then under price optimizer. This is a tool used for new move-ins only. If you're looking to increase rents for existing tenants, then you would use the tenant rate optimization. Click on unit push rate optimization. The first area that you're going to come to is setup. In order for unit revenue management to work, you need to check enable revenue management. If you don't check it, it's not going to prompt you for new rates on move-ins. Different options, default rate choice, default to the revenue management rate or standard rate at move-in or when making reservations. Standard rate is used by default, revenue management rate is used when available. If you have standard rate is used by default, that means you have your standard rate, for example, of 100 for your unit size. SiteLink may prompt you that you could charge $105 for this move-in. You would have a choice. If you have it chosen for revenue management rate is used when available, you do not have that choice. You are going to use the revenue management. Do you want a choice? Click standard rate is used by default. If you don't want a choice and you want to be forced to use the push rate, the suggested rate by SiteLink on a new move in, then you want to choose the second option. Reduce unit type and area rates when no lease is signed for X amount of days. All these options are choices you don't have to check them but if you have the first one chosen reduce unit type and area rates with no lease assigned for x amount of days here's an extreme example if you have 100 units and 99 of them are rented you would assume you're in a very good position and normally you would be but what if you did not rent that last unit for 30 days the argument could be made that even though your occupancy is high you have it done that well recently. So if there is a certain point, a certain amount of days, for example, 30 days, that you have not had a lease signed for a given unit type, this would reduce the suggested rate on a new move-in. Exclude unit types in areas with less than X units. When we're setting this up and we look at the default plans in a moment, it's based on percentages. What is your percentage rented? That is going to determine the suggested rate for the new move-in. If you have under a certain amount of units, if that's 10 or another amount for you. If we had 10 units and we have eight rented, we're at an 80% occupancy. If we have nine rented, we're at a 90% occupancy. That's a very big difference percentage wise compared to if we had 200 units of a certain size. So if there is a certain amount of units that you feel would potentially skew the numbers for percentage changes, put in that number. A typical number would be 10. For the suggested rate, the push rate suggestion, would you potentially want to round? If so, you have different rounding options. Typically, users would choose $1. Include reserved units as occupied units in push rate calculations. You may be in a situation where your facility is doing very well and because of the fact that people are reserving and the majority of them are actually moving in, you may want to have a reserved unit as occupied to therefore increase your numbers, increase your percentages. Disable unit revenue management for 30 days in this example after standard rate change. If we were prompting to increase the rent by 5% on a new move-in and you're doing very well and then you decide we're going to increase our standard rates. We're now going to make our standard rates 105 because everyone seems to be moving in at this 105 rate. You may not want to have SiteLink immediately now take that standard rate of 105 and then increase it again. So you could have 30 days is a very typical number that if you increase rents on your standard rates, what your units normally go by, 30 days would be a good number to wait until you start this process again. Override based on vacant units. Override push rates based on number of vacant units with the same unit type and size. Enable override for unit types in areas with, at most, 10 in this example, total units. This grid is meant to put a premium when you have a few vacant units left. For example, if we had one vacant unit left, we might say we really want to potentially increase our rates let's say 20% because we have one unit available. Number two, if we have two units available, 15%. So if you want to override the default suggestions from SiteLink because you have less than 10 units available, you're going to use this override setting. Within our plans, we have eight different choices. Standard plans one through four, custom plans five through eight. Usually a facility will use one plan and all of your different Unit sizes will go within this one grid or plan. Here are the plans. Conservative, mildly conservative, mildly aggressive, aggressive, plans five through eight, legacy, and then custom one, two, and three. 
In previous versions of SiteLink, there was one plan, which we now called Legacy, and there was one custom that you could choose. As the years went by, we determined what we called conservative through aggressive. These are default plans that you can use, or our legacy, which was the one default plan that we had in the past, or custom. Typically, customers will use a custom plan, but at the same time, if you don't want to have your own specific percentages that you want to come up with, and you say, I deem that we should be going conservative, you absolutely could choose a conservative plan. Typically, however, customers use the custom plans, custom one through custom three, which are options six, seven, and eight. If we decided we wanted to use a custom plan, you can click on each one of these boxes. We have an occupancy percentages and days at occupancy percentage. For example, if our 10 by 10s were at 95% occupancy and they were that way from 91 to 120 days, they would fall right here. 95% is between 90 and 100% occupancy. And if their occupancy is between 91 and 120 days, SiteLink is going to tell you to increase the rent by 10% on that 10 by 10. How are your 5x5s five doing? Your 5x5s five are at 50% occupancy, and they've been that way for 0 to 30 days. We'd look at this grid again, 50% occupancy, or anywhere between 50 and 70%. They would show between the 0 and 30, and this is telling us to increase it by 5% on a new movement. So again, all of your different unit sizes and types fall within this plan. It's one plan or one grid that all of your different sizes fall into. You can certainly change these parameters. We could say, maybe we don't want it to be from 90 to 100% we're going to do X. We could say between 87.5, we're clicking on these little greater than less signs to change the percentage band, 87.5 to 100, and then band two changed because of that. If you notice, if I make this 87.6 here, this is now 87.5. 87.7, 87.6, and we could change these percentage values. So this number two means 2%. We're increasing the rent or suggesting a push rate of 2%. Maybe we want it to be three. Type in three, and now if we're at 90% or anywhere between 87.7 and 100% occupancy for a given size, when we go to move in a unit, it's going to suggest that we increase that rate by 3%. You'll notice that you can also have a negative. If you have a negative three, this is telling us to decrease the rent or decrease the suggested rate. If our normal rent is $100, our standard rate, if we fall into this category, this is going to tell us to make it 97 on a new move-in. So again, ultimately you have the choice of changing this plan. If you want to, you can have zero, which means no change if a unit size and type falls within this area. The next tab is plan selection. By default, we were using the unit type and plan sizes, which were standard plans one through eight, where you're choosing one plan for all your sizes. But you could use monthly plans. If we click use monthly plans, we see our months, January to December, and you can choose a specific plan, numbered one through eight, of what you want to use in a given month. Now you might just say, well, we're always going to use our custom plan number six. But maybe in a certain month, everyone seems to move in. Maybe you're in a college town and everyone seems to move in in August. Maybe for August, you're going to use plan number seven, which is a custom plan, and you make this really, really aggressive or what aggressive means to you. But maybe in another month, in April, all of those college students tend to move out. Maybe we want to go conservative and we want to use plan number one, but in the rest of the year, we're using plan number six. So we have choices. Do we want to use the monthly plans where we choose a given plan for each respective month? Or do we want to use the unit type and size plans where we can choose a different plan based on the respective sizes? So if our five by fives, we know they're always being sold out. We could go very aggressive with that. If our aggressive plan, if we want to choose option three or a specific custom plan, we could type that in here. We could say, we want to go very aggressive for our five by fives, but our five by twenties, maybe we want to go conservative. You can pick and choose by type, which of the eight plans you want to use. Revenue management snapshot. By using the snapshot, you see all of your different unit types and it shows their area in many different columns, your standard rate. And then it shows you what the push rate would be based on the plan that's being used and where they fall in that band or occupancy percentage. If we go back, to our plan selection. I'm recording this 
in May. So for my monthly plan, I'm going to have for May, we're using plan number six. Now, if we go to revenue management snapshot, I'm gonna save that. Do you wanna save this entry? Yes. If we go back to unit push rate optimization, revenue management snapshot, you'll see all the plans are six because we're using the monthly plan and May is plan six. If we go to unit revenue management snapshot, we see all these sizes are using this respective plan. Whereas if we went back here and we use the unit type and sizes, click OK. Do you want to save this entry? Yes. Go back to unit push rate optimization, plan selection. You'll notice that some don't have any plan. Some do. If we go to revenue management snapshot, you'll see this size is using plan six. These other sizes were using plan zero because that's what we had chosen with our given plan. The majority, we didn't set up a plan. Only a few had a plan number. Ultimately, it's up to you what you want to choose, but this revenue management snapshot will show you what plan and what band and percentage occupancy each unit size is using and what the push rate or suggested rate would be on a new move-in. Now, how ultimately do you use this? When you go to operations move-in, and you look at your initial movement screen, that's where you now see the push rate column. You may have had this column and saw that it was blank before enabling it and you didn't necessarily pay attention to it. Now this is going to populate. And you'll see here, if I move in to this particular unit, there's the push rate at the bottom. If we had the choice, we could use the standard rate. We don't have that choice, so let's change that. If we go here to company, unit push rate optimization, Instead of it being forced, which is the second option, I can check standard rate is used by default. Click OK. Go back to operations, move in. Now when I choose that unit, I could use the standard rate of 100, which is the default, or I could use the push rate. In this case, it's telling us to decrease the rent. This is a demo count and most of the units are not rented. That's why it's telling us to decrease. Obviously, the majority of the time you're trying to increase your rents. So normally you're going to have a push rate that's higher, but depending on how that grid is set up, it could potentially be staying the same or reducing. My suggestion would be set up the unit push rate, come in here, look at your units and see, is this what we would want to have happen? Look at all of your rates. If you have questions, reach out to support. And if it's not something you want to use, go back to company, unit push rate optimization and uncheck it. You could disable it, still have all your settings there, but you can quickly enable it if you need to talk to someone in your organization to make sure that works for you. A lot of people, are hesitant to enable it because they're nervous. Did they set it up okay? By enabling it and quickly going to the move-in or not enabling it and looking at the revenue management snapshot, you can see where your units fall before you go ahead with it. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to support and use this tool. It's great to have it set up ahead of time. What do we want to have happen when we reach a certain percentage occupancy? Let's have the system work for us to give us those push rates, give us those suggestions on a new move in to not have to think about it as often. Let the system work for you and use this tool. It is a great option for new move ins.